This video is about a homework problem one of my students asked me about. It is problem 13.2.047 in the Larson and Edwards Calculus Early Transcendental Functions textbook, 7th edition. Um, before we solve this problem, um, I want to give you some background. I want to talk about the two-path test and then some other resources um, related to evaluating this limit. So let's read the problem and then we'll focus on the background and then we'll go and solve the problem. So the problem says, consider the limit um, as x, y approaches zero, zero of this function. Now we don't know exactly what this looks like. Maybe it looks something like this. And we're saying, as x and y get closer to the origin in the x, y plane. So we're down here. And x and y are approaching zero and zero. The question is, what happens to that function as x and y approach 0, 0? And um, for your test over this material, steps a, b, and c won't be laid out for you. Instead, we'll just say, um, show that the limit does not exist by evaluating the limit along two paths. Um, but with the um, homework in WebAssign, they are sort of breaking this problem down into pieces for you and telling you what to do. Um, so they say, determine if possible the limit along the line y equals ax, where a is not equal to zero. So those are just lines of different slopes. And then they say, determine if possible the limit along the parabola y equals x squared. And then they ask you if the limit exists. Um, so before we answer this, um, let's look at some background and then the two path tests, and then I'll refer you to some other resources before we work the problem. Okay, so let's say you've got a function of two variables, z equals f of x, y, and you're interested in the limit of that function as x, y approaches x naught, y naught. The way this is read is we have the limit as x, y approaches x naught, y naught of this function. That's one side. The limit of that function as x, y approaches x naught, y naught is L um, if the following is true. Um, what this means is that as x, y gets arbitrarily close to x naught, y naught. So our x's and y's are approaching this point. The question is, along all of those different paths, infinitely many paths, um, what happens to z? So if this limit is L, um, this is saying that as x, y gets arbitrarily close to x naught, y naught, and this is key in calculus three, from any direction, I'm not just checking the left and right like I did in Calc 1. I have to be able to check all of the directions simultaneously, which is hard, um, or along any path or every path. If we're saying this limit is equal to L, that means as x, y gets arbitrarily close to x naught, y naught along any path or from any direction, we can, we can approach on a sine wave. If there's like a, a sinusoidal curve that goes through that. I mean, it could just be a straight line in the xy plane, who knows? Along all the directions, anything you could possibly imagine that goes through that point, x naught, y naught. The z values um, on the graph of z equals f of xy, those get arbitrarily close to L. So the z values on this function are getting very, very close to this number, while x and y get arbitrarily close to this ordered pair. Now again, like I just said, um, this is different from calculus one because in calculus one you really only needed the limit from the left to exist and limit from the right to exist and they needed to be the same thing um, and then you would have a limit. Um, this is harder because we've got infinitely many ways that we can approach this point x naught y naught in the x y plane. Um, so one way um, that we can prove a limit does not exist um, is to use what's called the two path test. Um, just like in Calc 1, when you had to check and make sure that the limit from the left and the right were, they both existed and they were both the same, here um, we can prove that a limit does not exist um, by showing that there are two different ways that we can go to that point and get different limits. Like if, in Calc 1, if the limit from the left and the limit from the right were not the same, you could immediately say the limit does not exist. Um, that's what we're saying in Calc 3 as well. We're just not going from the left and the right anymore. We're just going along two different paths towards x naught, y naught. So um, that's what this says right here. If we obtain two different limits along two different paths, then this limit 
in general does not exist. Now there is a lot more information on the analytic geometry and calculus three playlist um, regarding questions like this. Um, number 50, these are not the titles, but these are the concepts that are related to what we just talked about. Um, number 50 talks about the limit concept in n dimensions. First, it starts in, in uh, 2D, just reviewing what you talked about in calculus one, and then it goes, it goes to 3D, looking at functions of two variables, and then we go to ND. Um, so that is abstract, but that's really what's going on. Um, 51 is an excellent review of all the calculus one limit um, evaluation techniques that may be needed. Um, the problems that are worked in that video um, involve factoring and reducing, multiplying by the conjugate, clearing complex fractions, and so on, um, that allow us to evaluate zero over zero in determinate forms, even when we have a function of two variables as, a, as opposed to a function of one variable. So that's available for you. And then there is a full video on the two path test, which we're, we're just reviewing now, and we're about to do an example of. Um, and that's video number 52 in the Calculus 3 playlist. Okay, so we're given this limit, and we're saying as x, y approaches 0, 0 of this function, what happens to the z values? If z is equal to x squared plus y squared over x, y, as x, y approaches 0, 0, what happens to z? Well, one thing that we typically do when we're evaluating a limit is we just plug in 0 and 0 here, but notice what happens if x is 0 and y is 0, we get 0 squared plus 0 squared, which is 0, over 0 times 0. So we had a 0 over 0 indeterminate form, which means the limit might exist or it might not exist. But we can tell from the way that they've set up this problem that chances are the limit does not exist. Um, so they're, they're sort of leading us down the path of taking the two path test to prove that this limit does not exist. So they say in part A, determine if possible the limit along the line y equals ax, where a is not equal to zero. Now, it's important to note that y equals ax is just a line of slope a, and it passes through zero, zero. So if a is one, it's just y equals x. So we're on this line. And in general, if we're on the line y equals ax, let's say a is positive. So we go one unit this way and we go a units up. We'll be on a line that looks like this. And what's great about this is this works for all values of a. So if we find the limit along the path y equals ax, then we're going to have a result that works for a equals one and a equals two and a equals 17 and a equals everything but zero. Um, and so that will give us all of those lines that pass through the origin except for y equals zero. Okay, um, so it says determine if possible the limit along this path. The way we do this is we just replace y with ax. So everywhere I see an, a y, I'm replacing it with an ax. And I'm saying, OK, what is the limit of this expression as x and ax both approach 0 now? That's going to tell us what happens to our z values on the graph um, as x and ax approach 0, 0 along any line of this form, which are just infinitely many lines um, of non-zero slope that pass through the origin. In order to evaluate this limit, one thing I could do again is plug in 0 for x and 0 for ax, but I'd get 0 over 0. So that doesn't help us. So we're, what we're hoping here is that we can simplify this expression so that we can evaluate this um, limit using calculus 1 techniques. We've got a product there. So remember how that works. We square each factor separately. And then I've got a times x times x is ax squared. I still have a 0 over 0 indeterminate form, 
But notice that I've got an x squared in common in the numerator and an x squared as a factor in the denominator. And um, because of that, um, this can be simplified. So I will factor out that x squared. And as x, ax approaches 0, 0, this is still a 0 over 0 in determinate form. But remember, we're not actually at the origin yet. We're just getting infinitely close to the origin. We're approaching the origin. And we're saying, well, if we're not at the origin, then x isn't 0. So x squared over x squared is just a number over itself, which is 1. And then I look at what's left, and it turns out what's left is um, continuous at the origin. It's just a constant. So the limit of a constant is the constant, and that constant is 1 plus a squared over a. So it looks like along the line y equals x, we get, that's when a equals 1, we get 1 plus 1 squared over 1. So the limit is 2 along this line. And when a equals 3, we get 1 plus 3 squared, which is 9 over 3. Um, so I've got 1 plus uh, 9 is 10, and then 10 over 3. That's the limit along y equals 3x and so on. So we're getting all of these different limits for all of these different values of A. Um, and actually that would be enough as far as the two path test is concerned to say that the limit does not exist because I get different values um, for different values of A. Um, but that's not what they ask us in the homework. They ask us to evaluate this limit. We say, let's replace the Y with AX. You've got a zero over zero indeterminate form, so you're not done that, done yet, excuse me. So you always want to try to factor and reduce first. That's a very common Calc 1 technique for evaluating a limit. So we factor out that x squared, reduce, and then we say what's left. Is it continuous? If it is, plug in the 0, 0, and then evaluate it. Since there's no x left, it's just the limit of a constant is just the constant. OK. And now they're saying, determine, if possible, the limit along the parabola y equals x squared. Again, they're asking about the limit as x, y approaches 0, 0. But this time they're saying, let's approach 0, 0 along the path x squared, y equals x squared. And y equals x squared, what happens to the z values as we approach 0, 0? And notice they picked a path here that passes through 0, 0, and a path here that passes through 0, 0. That's very important. Um, a lot of students say, well, why can't I just evaluate this at y equals 3? You can, uh, but that path, y equals 3, doesn't pass through 0, 0. That's a horizontal line. Um, so you need to pick a path that passes through that point, x naught, y naught, which in this case was 0, 0. OK, so they picked this path for us. They said, try y equals x squared. So we're going to do the same thing that we did on the last one. You just replace dy with x squared. And then we simplify wherever we can. x squared squared, that's an x to the fourth. And then down here, we've got an x times x squared is x cubed. As so we can take out an x squared in the numerator and denominator again. And I'll write that x cubed as x squared times x. And then the x squareds reduce. Now at this point, it's almost a Calc 1 problem where I'm thinking about the limit of this expression as x approaches 0. As x approaches 0, what happens to 1 plus x squared over x? Well, clearly the numerator approaches 1 and the denominator approaches 0. Um, so I've got a 1 over 0 or a non-zero constant over 0, which we know from Calculus 1 is an infinite limit. It's either going to be positive infinity or negative infinity, depending on whether we're approaching um, or x is approaching 0 from the left or from the right. So it looks like 
along the line y equals, or along the curve y equals x squared, excuse me. When x is positive, we're going to have 1 over a tiny positive number. So the z values on that graph are going to go to positive infinity. And when x is negative, we're going to be on this side. So that will be 1 over a tiny negative number. 1 divided by a tiny negative number is a large negative number. So the z values on the graph are going to approach negative infinity on this side. So this limit, you get two different values on the left and the right of 0. Um, so we'll just say that this limit does not exist. And I guess if we want an explanation, we'll say because the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of 1 plus x squared over x is not equal to the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of 1 plus x squared over x. This one's positive infinity and the other one's negative infinity. And then the last part says, does the limit exist? Explain. Well, I, can, I think we can say, no, it doesn't exist. Um, along the line y equals ax, the limit is always 1 plus a squared over a. And for different, va different values of a, that means we're getting different limiting values for z. If a is 2, we get uh, 5 over 2. If a is 3, we get uh, 10 over 3. If a is 1, we get just 2. So we have infinitely many different limits here. Um, and they're not the same. And this limit only exists if the z values approach L from every possible direction. And this is actually saying from all of these different directions, we get different z values. And this is saying, if you go along this path, that you don't even get a finite z value along this path. You get a negative infinity on one side and a positive infinity on the other. So does the limit exist? We'll say no. Um, the function, which is the same as the z values, so that z is a stand-in for the values of our function. Um, let's say approaches different values along different paths. I'm not sure if this is one of the available answers in WebAssign, but that's the idea. Now, if you see a question on the test like this, it won't be phrased this way. This was outlined for you by WebAssign. What I would have, or what a test question over this material might say is, show that this limit does not exist using a two-path test. And the hard part for you is picking a path that goes through x not y not. And for most of these problems, x not y not is 0, 0. So this is a pretty um, typical uh, form of a limit does not ex that does not exist. Um, yeah. And typically, we, what we like to do is we like to choose y or x um, such that after we substitute, the degree in the numerator and the degree in the denominator is the same like we did here. When we select, selected y equals ax, I ended up with x squared terms in the numerator and an x squared term in the denominator. And that was really easy to, to cancel those and get rid of them. Um, so that's it, guys. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions about this. And again, here's more resources. If you want to, to know about the limit concept in general, watch video 50. If you want extensions of Calculus 1 limit evaluation techniques, if you want to review that, go to video number 51. And there are, um, uh, there's at least one more example of the two path test in video number 52 on the analytic geometry and Calculus 3 playlist.